Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to read one final word, I believe, for the night. And this is for the world. Check this out. John 3, 14 through 17. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You know, I'm going to share a little something, something with you, a little revelation God shared with me years ago. Pat's two cents. All right. Years ago, when I was, uh, let's see. It was, <coughs> excuse me. I had gotten saved in 1981. And I ended up giving my, I got saved in 81. That's when I gave my heart to the Lord. 1982, round about there, I was reading a scripture. I was reading about the story of how God told Moses to lift the serpent up on a pole and set that pole up on a high hill. And the judgment God had sent to the Israelites was what they call fiery serpents, mm -hmm, venomous snakes, were slithering all over the place, just randomly biting people, and everybody that got bit over time died. Well, when Moses interceded for them, God said, okay, you want to spare him? Make a brass serpent. Stick it up on a pole and, and put that sucker up on the top of a hill. And he told them where to put it. Everything. When I read that scripture, I kept looking up like, Lord, what were you thinking? That makes no sense. Why would you take the very thing that was killing them and make an image in the likeness of the thing that was killing them and put it up on a hill and then tell the people that were dying from the thing that was killing them to look up? at the thing that looks like the thing that was killing them. I mean, I'm telling you, I was going cuckoo over this thing. And do you know God and all his patience, he loves when we dig for truth. Even when we don't agree with him, he's cool with it. He knows who he is. But it gives him an opportunity to give us revelation. And that's what God did. He gave me revelation and it blew my mind when he did he explained to me in a mental split second this was mental communication the serpent in the wilderness that Moses lifted up represented Jesus Christ the Bible refers to the son of man it says even so must the son of man be lifted up I didn't know about that scripture when God showed me this. All I knew was I couldn't figure out why it had to be a brass serpent. Why couldn't it be an angel or something pretty? <laughs> anyway, Jesus came in the form of sinful flesh. Just like the serpent that, rep that was a likeness of the fiery serpents that were killing the people, Jesus came in the form of sinful flesh. The sinful flesh is what's killing us. You get me? Okay. We, like those people had to, have to look to Jesus to be saved from the thing that's, in, that's destroying us. Sin. The sin that's in our makeup, in our being, in our fiber. 
He frees us from that. So that sin no longer has power over us to destroy us. Ergo, we don't perish. Anyway, okay. That may be more exciting to me than it is to you. But that was a revelation to dum diddy dum dum Because I had no clue. So, I say this to say this to you. What Jesus did on the cross when he allowed himself to be disrespected, mocked, beaten, tortured, and ultimately hung on a tree. What he did through his love for his creation was allow his creation to destroy his body as it were now all Jesus had to do was call on 10,000 angels to come and handle it you know he could have taken himself off the cross trust me he had that power but his love was more powerful than his own pain and his own desires because what he saw was his creation even the ones hammering the nails in him he loved them even so much that he was still willing to die and that's what pinned him to his cross was his love not their overpowering him because they could not he allowed them to capture him beat him torture him mock him disrespect him do you hear what I'm saying? Jesus gave up the ghost. He wasn't killed. He gave up the ghost. He gave his life. Do you hear what I'm saying? God gave his only begotten son. He allowed that thing to happen. For us. For me. For you. So when you want to disrespect or put down what Jesus did, think again. How many of you, well, I know I wouldn't, ain't no need me lying. How many of you would be willing to lay your life down and allow somebody to torture you, torture you, and then kill you slowly and painfully while they laughed at you and spit at you? Be how many of you would give your life for a person who didn't even like you not only didn't like you talked about you like a dog used you like a fool you hear what I'm saying played you like a fiddle and spit you out like trash how many of you would die for someone like that <laughs> Jesus did past present and future there's some fools still waiting to be born. He died for them too. That's love. And I say this. Don't be dumb diddy dum dum now. Don't be a fool. Don't turn your back on that kind of love. God's love is the only love that will save us from ourselves that will save us from the contaminants of this world and its standards. God bless you as you choose to serve the Lord. God bless you as you make the right choice in time. Yeah. Don't dilly and dally. Say that prayer. Ask God to come into your life. Ask God to forgive you for your sins. Tell him you accept his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your savior. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit, which will give you power to live in God's ways. And forsake your own. And ask God to reveal his love to you as he heals your soul. God bless you.